All right, if you are looking to monitor the spectrum um, RF from multiple locations and send it back to one central uh, dashboard, like in this case what you see on the screen here, you're in the right place. I'll keep this video a little shorter and I will reference a video I did a year ago uh, and I would encourage to get this set up to fill in the gaps refer to that video because uh, it takes a long time to go through I'm figuring out ways that I can make this easier and I'll just go through some high-level details uh, first off the video what am I referring to so about a year ago Dragon OS uh, spectrum detection logging with the RTL SDR, ANT SDR, and SDR for space using the Influx database and Grafina uh, to kind of pull in the information and then display it. That video, uh, what is it, 30 some minutes long, that'll fill in the gaps, which I know I'm going to kind of gloss over a lot this time around. Let me minimize this. Uh, I spent the last couple days here as time permitted. Uh, getting familiar watching that previous video I did just to make sure I was setting things up. Making it uh, a little easier was uh, a, con a contribution by somebody here that did a Ansible playbook for some post install tasks for Dragon OS. And actually, the post install tasks, if you get in and you look at the source code, is unique to the video I just had pulled up. So it helps get the influx database and Grafana set up to the point where once you run that Ansible playbook just like it talks about in the directions here I would encourage running a sudo app update and uh, upgrade and even looking at the source code if you don't want that to happen you can go in and manipulate some of these uh, scripts that are in here just so you can see this is happening in the background so if you don't want that to happen you can uh, cancel some of that out and if you just run the Ansible playbook and it's taking a while you might think it's stalled out but it is updating some things and upgrading uh, packages in the background. Once that's done you should end up uh, with a localhost port 3000 that is reachable. You'll probably land on something like this where it's going to encourage you to add your first data source and then create your first dashboard. If you refer to that earlier video you're gonna see how I came through and how I added a connection um, you should in this case already have a data source created by the Ansible script if I recall that WBFM I just went through and uh, actually the WBFM I think has created the database in the influx uh, database but I had to add the connection to it here which I really detail in that other video but that parts pretty simple created a name, put the URL, localhost8086, looking for the WBFM database. Uh, no, I didn't really go through the extent of creating a username and password. What I did is I have the, I should probably point that out, everything you see me recording and everything you see me doing on the screen right at this moment is running on the, uh, the, the War Dragon. So basically a small PC that I'm trying to build as time permits and provide, but Regardless if you use a War Dragon laptop, whatever, uh, that is what this is uh, running on right now, and that is what the database and everything is set up on. And then I put Tailscale on here, which I've talked about before, just a free VPN like uh, service. Uh, it has an internet connection, and then I'm not, I haven't shown it yet, but when I do pull it up, the Raspberry Pi 4 running the latest Dragon OS Pi 64 also has a tail scale connection and that is how these two are communicating um, fairly easy once it's all set up I'm just use the IP addresses that uh, tail scale provides each and it's like I'm on a you know local area network here but over a secured uh, connection between the two that is this tab here lists all my machines I'm not going to open that up right now but yeah so once you get that data source set up then you're going to set out on making a dashboard that got a little more confusing and I'm not sure why it doesn't list if you have a new dashboard here maybe it's just because it's called new dashboard I should have gave it a different name but to search for it 
I have two panels that I've I've added here. I'll explain why there's no data in here in a second. And there's no GPS information in the unless I've missed something in the um, script that I'm using with SDR for space. That's something I'll have to like add or talk with a developer about or, or see what I'm missing there. But with the new Grafana, there is a uh, map that is included, a map plugin. Uh, if I had GPS information, I would then have the um, all the sensors, all the remote SDR showing up where their locations are, and then uh, ideally correlated with the information that is coming in, the, the spectrum surveys, the detections that it's uh, sensing out there in the spectrum. The reason why you see Dragon OS and Dragon OS Pi 64 is I, I had the War Dragon host that I'm recording on now also running SDR for Space feeding information in here. I've got it down now to where it's just the remote Raspberry Pi feeding information in. And that was all configured uh, in this area here where there's a lot of options to set up uh, to get it set up like I have it. Again, refer to the previous video because I do show some other areas of Grafana that I had to go to in order to create tags so that I could select uh, different drop down frequencies, different hosts, and then build out this bottom area to group information and have it ultimately displayed up here. I also talk about the panel information that is down the side here. Uh, also, if you do want to get this set up, which I, I didn't cover in the previous videos, like how do I get different uh, visualizations? Here's where all of that is. I must have looked around forever. Uh, to find the geo map and that that's where that's at and then you can actually add a different panel and have data displayed in it so that just remember that's where that's at come back here so we see the information is coming in so how did I get the information coming in wasn't too bad uh, but now I jump over on the Raspberry Pi I have VNC up and running obviously could cut this down and, and stop the uh, in the case of the Pi it's actually the GDM3 dash that's running so you can make this headless and save some resources but how did I get things running well I refer to that previous video I made literally almost the same cron job I just have it running uh, at a much faster pace for this uh, video to get some information in but Obviously, I probably could make this much more efficient. Uh, matter of fact, I know that I can. There's no need to be changing directories around and stuff just to run this. But whatever, it's how I have it running right now. I uh, have a cron tab that changes into the user source SDR for space RX spectrum one wide spectrum directory. That is how it is set up on the Pi 64. I then break out to another command at which point the SDR VM binary is three yeah yeah three levels up so I just say hey SDR for VM run with attack F and because I'm in that wide spectrum directory I just say hey run this spectrum detect grafana.js that runs every minute I save I exit that does its thing uh, you probably want to configure the actual uh, script though but and so a couple of things I'll point out here that I noticed is one I had kind of figured that when I ran the SDR for VM in a script and there was no settings in here I thought it would just copy it over by default which normally it does but it did not in this case I actually ran into an error so say you don't have this settings.js well there is an example one uh, sitting just a couple levels up uh, and almost the main directory let's see settings yeah so that is the one that I copied over here and I knew it was right because there's another one floating around in here and I need to take care of that that does not have the SDR bandwidth and that was causing some issues so here I've left just for the sake of making this uh, easy to get running as I worked through here again I left it uh, the default sample rate 2e6 bandwidth 2e6 I changed the host name so I could differentiate the devices that I had sending information in 
RTL SDR. I actually have the V4 for this demonstration just so that I could show hey the V4 RTL SDR V4 is working now in the Dragon OS Pi 64 build. I left the gain default. I did change the Grafana uh, IP address in FluxDB uh, to the tail scale IP address. Save that. And then if we take a look at the actual script that we're going to run, that three spectrum detect Grafana, you can see it pulls in the settings. Uh, I did start messing with the database server here, but I just set it in the settings, let it do its thing. I have not changed the trigger. I've not really changed anything else in here. So you could really look over what is going on in this uh, script. You'll find where the minimum, the max frequencies are at, where I want to do that scan over. So you could change that there. Um, that's interesting. There's gain again there, I see. Uh, sample rate and bandwidth. I recall that from the uh, settings. And just some additional information if you were to run this script you know it does print out if, if you were to run it from the command line directly here it would pump out like a uh, an image of the spectrum it puts some other information elsewhere so I encourage like reading through here and seeing what is going on and this is where you know I'm open to um, feedback how I can make this actually the whole thing easier and I know the SDR for space uh, developer has been extremely helpful and is uh, open to you know ideas and improvements so uh, really uh, a great group of uh, people um, or an individual or really people uh, doing this particular project and providing this SDR for space uh, the free version uh, well for free so anyways we're sending results to the influx DB uh, and let's see what else so really once you got that script going in the cron job preferably after you edited the uh, script you should be you I, I say you should be you should be okay if you want to make sure that you can reach your influx database you can install which I did already you can install the influx DB client right from the uh, directory and then you can do host, although I forget my IP address to my War Dragon over tail scale. If you just want to make sure you can make the connection, host. You obviously want to be able to reach the database that you're trying to get information into, so that's a good check there. And I feel like I've like really simplified this a lot as far as this particular side of things. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I missed. Yeah, that should be that should be it. I'll pull up the cron one more time. I should just probably copy and paste this into the description. I'll try and remember to do that this time. Yeah, so totally open to any improvements to this. Once you get that uh, Pi 64 sending information back, then you should be able to pull that in. In the, I have it set up, let's see, so like say the last three hours, uh, we can set this um, refresh every, you know, automatically, you know, or maybe you want it to, uh, Maybe you want the interval down a little bit lower, or actually, you know what, auto I think is what what you would want. But yeah, now you get that information, and in. and I think that you could make it more usable with the GPS location and having multiple um, points that you're looking at the spectrum in. You can get it back here. So yeah, I I really like this. I think it's um, pretty exciting, and hope to figure out how to make it easier to set up, how to, you know, look at the, the information a little bit easier, 
um, to understand what's going on. So hope that is helpful.